Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the best alternatives for Skype on Linux. Now, there aren't a... Okay, so let me just put it this way. There are a lot of alternatives. Uh, some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are not really Skype alternatives, but are meant for something else, but you can use them for Skype purpose purposes, you know, in a pinch. Uh, today I'm going to cover five, maybe six of them. I'm calling them the best, but there are other alternatives out there that I'll probably try to list in the description below. But these are just the ones that I've found that are fairly useful and fairly competitive to Skype. Now, first, let's talk about why you wouldn't want to use Skype. I'm not going to talk about open source in this at all, because some of the ones that I'm going to give you aren't actually open source. I, they may actually all be open source. I'm not sure. Uh, that's not how I went through and, you know, created this list. More, I was just looking at ones that weren't controlled by Microsoft. Um, something that was controlled maybe by a smaller company. Uh, something that, you know, actually has a, a native limit Linux client that's not terrible. Because uh, the one on the Skype client for Linux is it's handicapped by the, it being for Linux because it doesn't have a lot of the features that the Windows version has. It's just a, a thing to say. Um, so let's just go ahead and um, jump right in. So uh, this one here is called Qtox. It runs on a, um, it's kind of like a server server paradigm kind of thing. A lot of those are like this. It's, it's, I'm no, I don't think this is federated, but it's um, it's called Qtox. It runs on Tox. This is just a, it's one of those ones where there's the service is called Tox, and then there's a whole bunch of clients. This one here just happens to be called Qtox. I'm believing the reason why it's called Qtox is because it's written in um, uh, cute. Went blank there for a minute. I believe that's the reason why it's called Qtox. I'm I can, don't quote me on that. Um. It does pretty much everything you'd want Skype to do, but it is not the it's not the most intuitive software of the ones that I'll show you. So you can go through, you can add contacts, you can sh it'll show you all the contacts that you have. I don't actually have any contacts on this here. It'll show you previous uh, transfer to files and stuff, and then you just have settings. It's it's not the most like I said, it's not the most intuitive things. It's also the not the most um, feature rich thing so you can change the the user interface and stuff like i said this this runs on a service called tox and so there are other um clients for this that have probably have more features different interfaces and so on so um that's just one option it is free i it's also open source i believe there's also a terminal client so if you want to use tox from the terminal you could and then i think it like uses maybe like mpv or something to show the video i'm not sure I could be just pulling that on my ass. I, I saw like a, a screenshot of it, so that's about as far as my uh, experience with that goes. Um, the audio quality and stuff like this is similar to, to Skype. Um, the only thing I don't know is whether or not this will actually go through and uh, record uh, anything. Like, I don't think that, like, because Skype has the this... Uh, ability to record the calls you're on I'm not sure that this has that uh, capability um, I'd not, I'm not seeing if it does so well that, that's that's talk so the next one is called jammy now this one here is very pretty uh, this is a, it's a GTK application but they do have a cute client as well um, and it's very well put together so um, it has keyboard shortcuts just like you would have like in any GNOME application. It, all these do require accounts. And it doesn't have a ton of options and stuff, but it does have a, pu a plug-in uh, mechanism. It allows you to, um, the normal things that you you know, do with a like, set audio settings and things like that, just normal stuff. Um, again, I'm not sure if it allows for uh, recording or not. Um, I'm not. Oh, it does. It does have call recording. Uh, that is really cool. Um, for the Linux cast, I think Martin and I are going to try this one of these days. Um, 
And because this one, of the ones that are on this list, this one looks the best to me. It just, I don't know, it feels Linuxy like some of the other ones don't. Um, m modern Linuxy, if that's if that's a term for, you know, it's not a term, but it's a, you know, it just feels the best out of all of them that I've tried. Uh, I had not had a chance to test the uh, the audio and video quality in this one, uh, but everything I've read said it's really very good. Um, so that is Jammy. And all of these are available either as snaps, flat packs, or in your local repositories. This one here came from the standard Arch repositories. Matter of fact, I believe all the ones that I've actually downloaded were in the standard Arch repositories and not the, not the AUR. The next one is Telegram. So uh, I think everyone probably uses Telegram that's on Linux because Telegram is a big thing. Uh, an alternative to this one would be Signal, because Signal does the same things. It's only a little bit more, I guess, encrypted. But Telegram is more popular, so that's the reason why I'm including it on the list. Um, basically, this is a basic. This is one of those ones where this is meant to be a chat app, but has kind of video chat features propped onto it. It's not the one I would recommend for you to do anything like recording a podcast because it doesn't have, it doesn't have a lot of the features like like Jammy has the recall recording features and all those you know different audio and visual settings and um, things are because it's it's meant to be a you know a video call thing. Uh, this is not. It's meant to be a chat platform that has video calling on top of it. It's okay uh, and it will do in a pinch. It's more it's more like video calling instead of like a video recording long session kind of thing like Zoom. That's another one you won't see on this list is Zoom. I don't like Zoom at all. Um you also won't see Jitsi on this because I don't care for Jitsi. Um just from some bad experiences on this. So that's Telegram. Uh this one here is not open source. Um I forgot about that, but at least I don't think it's I don't think Telegram is open source. I don't think so. Um I use it for messaging. I've only used the video thing a couple times. It was okay. It's not the best, but not the worst. Um, I It's on the list because it's very, very popular. So chances are, if you need to call somebody, they probably have a Telegram account, and they won't have to set up something like a, a Jammy or a, a Tox account or something. The next one is, um, this is another one that's not open source. This is Discord. Um, and I, I will be freely admit that I never use Discord in the way that I'm suggesting you use it. Uh, but I've heard good things. I know a lot of people who record their podcasts on uh, on Discord. Uh, and I know that it's probably unparalleled in terms of the ability to do large chats amongst a whole bunch of people. It's similar to Slack and Teams, I guess, in that way. Uh, that It's very much a chat app that has, but unlike Telegram, where it's a chat app that has tacked on audio and visual stuff, this actually was built simultaneously with audio and uh, video stuff, you know, uh, in mind. I'm not actually sure if it will do video. Um, it may it may not. I know for sure it does audio. So that is... Uh, discord the last one i'm going to show you i have not downloaded and i have not tried but i know it's an old and true uh staple amongst linux users and everything it's called mumble uh it's it's i believe it's a server mechanism where you can actually run it and then it does uh, you know you kind of control it off from your own server and it, i believe it does not do video at all but I know it will do audio, and I know it works very well on pe for people who have very um, uh, very bad internet connections. So it, it, if you're struggling with bandwidth, this Mumble is the one for you. It's also, of the ones that I've showed you, the one that's the most old-fashioned. It's the oldest. It's been around for well over a decade. Um, and it's not particularly complicated. It's not... It kind of reminds me of IRC quite a bit for when you set things up. Uh, even like the these things here are your, you know, you got to connect to a server, which is kind of like IRC. Um, and, you know, it has rooms and stuff, I believe. Anyways, that is Mumble. All, and that one is that, uh, free and open source. So... Those are the few of the uh, apps that I was going to... that I went over... The ones that I'm most interested in, in trying long term is Jammy and Qtox. 
I tried talks a little bit. Um, and I haven't tried Jammy in terms of a call yet. Uh, and I'm I'm really looking forward to doing so because it really looks cool. Um, and I just really kind of want to get myself off from Skype. Um, I I want to try to find something that it's open source. But that really wasn't you know the 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 point of it. More I just want to. I don't like being reliant on Skype because I feel, have a feeling that sometimes Skype is just going to go away in favor of Microsoft Teams, and that's not a great feeling to know that the thing that you rely on to record your podcasts or whatever just might be yanked out away from you because Microsoft has moved in, on to something different. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If not. We really do even appreciate the thumbs down because it means you've interacted with the video, uh, you know, to this point, and that's really all we were, we're interested in. You can also hit the subscribe button and the notification icon bell there so that you don't miss any of our videos or podcasts that we post five or seven days a week. And if you're interested in supporting the show in any other way, you can do so by going at pay to patreon.com slash the Linux cast. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.